Okay, so this is problem four from chapter 13, and the section, the goal of this section is to learn to do circuit analysis in the S domain. So, we have a parallel RLC circuit with no power supply. We have a 2K resistor in parallel with a 3.12 millihenry inductor and a 12.5 nanofarad um, capacitor. And for part A, we need to find the impedance in the S domain, and in part B, we're going to find the zeros, which is also called the poles. So, we need to know what, how to translate or transform inductors and, trans, and um, capacitors to the um, S domain, and that is really straightforward. The transformation L sub S is LS, and capacitors LC is going to be 1 over SC. We don't have to worry about the voltages in this case because it's not connected to a power supply. We're just looking for impedance. So I am going to erase this with LS. Well actually we need to calculate that so that's going to be 3.125 S well, you know what? No, not yet. Not yet. That complicates everything. Don't F. In fact, sorry, I'm just waking up now. I just worked um, for long, long days. So I'm not fully awake. Um, so let's just replace this with LS, and this is 1 over SC. All right. Well, Everything that applied before still applies. Nothing changed. Laws don't change just because we're in the frequency, or frequency domain, and it certainly doesn't change just because we're in the S domain. So 1 over ZEQ is equal to 1 over 2K. This is just the, um, something that you should know by now, and that's 1 over the, imp the equivalent impedance is just the sum of, the, of 1 over the individual impedances. So this is 1 over LS plus 1 over S plus 1 over, over 1 over SC. Well, that's just SC. So now we need to combine things. And, and this part was ugly math. I'm going to come back to this 1 over ZEQ, right? So I'm going to park it somewhere because I don't have board space. Um, well, actually, we can just do 1 over Z EQ. Okay, but I'm not going to write that every single time, so let's start bringing things together. Now go back to 7th grade algebra. When you add fractions, everything needs to have a common denominator. So the least common denominator is 2K times LS, so that's what we're going to do. So this term, right? 1 over 2,000 needs an LS over LS in order to be able to add it together. Plus, 1 over LS, well, this one is missing a 2,000. Plus, SC, this one is missing everything. This is missing a 2,000 LS and a 2,000 LS. Okay. Now, this is simply algebra. Now, everything has the common denominator that we need, which is 2,000 LS. So everything is now over 2,000 LS. This then is just, this term is just LS times 1, which is LS. This is 2,000. This is 2,000 L. S L C S squared. So now we have a polynomial. Now we have 1 over Z E Q over this. If we flip both sides, they will be equivalent. Therefore, Z E Q is equal to 2000 L S over, I'm going to do the square first. 2000 L C S squared plus L S plus 2000. That's Z equivalent. Now, when we translate everything, we are going to develop a really good habit 
of make, forcing this to be a, um, a one coefficient. And to do that, I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by 1 over 2,000 LC to force this S squared to be a, two, an, a, a one coefficient. The reason is, is that all of my tables of the translation from the, uh, from the S domain back into the, free, the time domain has this as a one frequency or a one coefficient. So we have to do that in order to use that table. And we have to use that table, otherwise we get into complex systems of partial differential equation. And as much as I hate doing this, uh, partial fraction expansion is much better than the alternative. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the same thing, which we can do because that's just multiplying by a form, special form of 1. So we're going to take top and bottom to be 1 over 2,000 LC. And the purpose of that, again, is the force of one coefficient. 1 over 2,000 LC. Okay, when I multiply the numerator by that, the 2,000 L cancels out. And I have SC, so Z equivalent is equal to S over C in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I have, oopsies, sorry about that. I need to, well, hopefully you, <laughs> I am not going to rewrite all of that, but you can go back in the video if you need that information. But once you distribute the bottom through, you should come up with S squared plus S times 1 over 2,000 C. Oops. That should be 2,000. 1 over 2,000 C plus 1 over L C. Okay. Now, we substitute in numbers. So this is where we go, this is, this is really 12.5 E minus 9. So here we have 2,000 times 12.5 E minus 9. And here we have, this is, um, 3.12.5 e minus 3 times 12.5 e minus 9. Do all of that and this becomes eight e seven s. This becomes just forty thousand s. And this becomes 2.56 E8. Okay, so now we have everything in the special format of partial fraction expand. Well, actually, that's the answer to part A. So the impedance, the impedance is 8 E7 over S squared plus 40. Thousand S plus 2.56 E8. So for part B, poles. Poles are where where the poles are where you have S, right? The solutions for S minus. That's the denominator, right? Poles are zero denominator in the form of S minus. So whatever's the answer is there, and the answer is there. It's going to be the minus of that. So I'm going to call this minus P1 and minus P2. We can use the quadratic formula to solve this. Remember, the quadratic formula says x. Usually it's x, but in this case, we don't, we're not using x. We're using s is equal to negative b. Remember, this is the coefficient is a of s squared. The square root is a. The coefficient of s is b, and c is the constant without an s. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole thing over 2a. So let's identify 
our parts. Okay, so we're going to find the two answers there. So B, B is 40,000. A, well, A is 1, right, coefficient of S, and C is 2.56E8. So then S is equal to negative 40,000 plus minus the square root of 40,000 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2.56E8. The whole thing over 2 times 1. So, I'm not going to really do that because I already did that. The answer, the poles then, are the negative of those two answers. So, if your answer one of your answer was 20,000, then the answer, the pole, would be negative 20,000. So, the negative of. So, therefore, when you do that, you should come up with poles at 32,000 and 8,000. All right, make sure to like the Facebook page below and um, do a response video. Thanks.